Hello there people, so here we are on the 12th of May 2019. So what I thought I'd do is a little update on Sundays, just showing you where I'm up to, what's happening sort of throughout the season. It's good to, you know, for you people to see it, and for myself of course, in the future, you know, because when I look back at, um, you know, previous years worth of videos, you know, videos that I've done at the same time of year, like a year or however many years ago before it's sometimes quite nice to see like the changes in weather and sort of temperatures whatever and what I've you know how far on plants are at that particular time of year and how they differ from year to year so yeah so lots going on here I've got a lot of things that are, I need to do a lot of jobs things are growing very fast now um, the rain that we have had has helped very much so we've got daytime temperatures of about 15 degrees C which um, I'm trying to think that's about sort of 58 degrees Fahrenheit but uh, please check you know don't take my word on that and we've got nighttime temperatures tonight apparently it's going to go down to 2 degrees C which I think's about 36 degrees Fahrenheit so still relatively chilly I mean this time last year it was much warmer so I'm not putting anything too delicate out yet simply because um, you know I don't want to I don't want to risk, um, you know, sort of losing anything to frost, so to speak. So let's start off by having a little look. Now, the scale insect sort of thing. I'm just going to glance over that. But yeah, what I'm doing is I'm picking them off by hand. Okay, I'm, I know I should, I should have done it weeks ago, but uh, you know how it goes. I need to get some of that neem oil to spray with that. But I've been sort of scraping them off with a, um, you know, a pair of scissors, which does work to a, to a degree. Now, anyway, so. Dixie red peach and it has set a small crop this year so you can see they start if I put my finger there look you can see they're starting to sort of get a bit larger I mean it's nothing compared to the crop that this lovely tree had last year but um, I'm, you know I don't expect it to produce heavy crops year on year I mean uh, you know that just uh, unless you're very lucky or whatever that generally doesn't really happen so yeah the peach tree just got to sort out that little infestation um, I'm working on it but um, yeah I will get some neem oil so thank you for that peeps and now a few of you in my other videos have commented on this the blood orange I mean it's it's going mega I mean look at that that's growing like that look and these little flowers that hopefully will open up soon and all being well I'm hoping to get a nice um, you know a few oranges on there that'd be fantastic that would um, the pomegranate variety province is doing incredibly well all this new growth there the catalyst the heat of the polytunnel is very much helping with that and the persimmon otherwise known as Sharon fruit look at that look look at the growth I mean it's it's just doing beautiful already and once again benefiting very much for you know from the extra warmth in the polytunnel of course uh, both these plants the pomegranate and the um, persimmon, otherwise known as Sharon fruit, do require a period of cold for the dormancy period, but at the same time, they also will appreciate, you know, the warmth, you know, extra warmth in the polytunnel and a long warm summer, which, of course, uh, you know, here in the tunnel, it will help very much with that. I mean, look at them leaves, look, lovely leaves, aren't they? Now, this is intriguing. This is the Royal Sovereign. Royal Sovereign. Let's just make a strawberry. What are you talking about? Autumn Royal, rather. Grapevine here. A variety from California, and it's set some crop. So we've got a few little grapeies there. Of course, it's going to be, you know, five, six months or something like that before the grapes are ready. And this vine does benefit from a longer growing season. And if you're going to grow this variety, Autumn Royal, here in the UK, it's recommended that you grow it in a polytunnel for the extra long season. It will hopefully provide. So very ornamental, looking good. Put out some massive growth. Okay, now I've got it set in the polytunnel. You can see the stem there. Now, very often, the traditional way to grow grapes in a greenhouse or a polytunnel is to have the um, you know the root outside for watering. Well, had no trouble with it here. Grape roots tend to be very deep once the plants are established, and they're very good at finding their own water. I mean, you've got to think the sort of countries in which grapes you know thrive, or one is thought to have, where one traditionally thinks think thinks that they thrive. You know, they tend to be drier, longer, hot warm very warm hot summers so you know what i'm saying so it's doing fine in here as it is 
Okay, and down here, this is another grapevine I set, and this was from a cutting. And this, if I'm not mistaken, it's either one of two. It's either Lake Mont Seedless, which I spoke a lot about, or Muscat Bloch, which I've also spoke a lot about. But the plan, all being well, is to have, you know, two beautiful grapevines. So one grapevine here, up this side, and this grapevine here to be growing up there and along here. I just want it to look gorgeous and fantastic in here, very much like a, a little sort of um, a slice of warmer regions of the world. This is what I'm aiming for anyway, hence the, you know, warmer traditionally associated with warmer climate fruits like the peach, the um, blood orange, the pomegranate, the Sharon fruit and the grapevines. That's the plan. And I'm going to have melons in here as well, hopefully. And my tomatoes are rocking and rolling, as you can see in the grow bags. Now, all being well, I will be taking these um, plants, you know, away from here, putting them outside. Probably next weekend, just when I know the weather's going to be a little bit warm. I just don't want to risk losing anything, particularly now. Now, what have I got here now? Snake beans. Now, these are an intriguing plant to grow very much. Now, snake beans are generally grown in warmer climates, okay? I have grown them with success here in the UK before. And what I'm going to do is plant them up, I might even do it this evening, into a large container. There's a slug there, that's going to be sorted out. Um, a large container and grow them here in the polytunnel. Now, they're not the sort of thing that you grow if you want guaranteed results, but once again, it's adding to the sort of, uh, you know, what do you call it, ambience of the exoticness. So that's the plan. Now, what else have I got? Runner beans, they're looking brill variety, best of all. I've grown all the same variety for simplicity, okay? What I'm doing very much with a lot of things is other than having loads of varieties of the same thing, excluding the tomatoes, I've a it's different this year for that I'm sticking to you know one and making it work that's what I want to do and I bought some of these from home base the other day the same time I bought that uh, wallflower if you saw my wallflower video so strawberry Cambridge favorite now what I'm going to do with these I as you know if you've been watching the old channel for a while I purchased some other Cambridge favorites from home base the other day um, well, I'll say the other day, must have been a month or so ago. Now, I've got them set outside in the garden, in the soft fruit bed. But um, once again, I bought the same varieties. I want to take cuttings, not cuttings, but take runners year on year. So that all being well, I will, you know, shouldn't have to buy strawberry plants again unless I want to dabble with another variety. I'm looking at Royal Sovereign, but uh, we'll talk about that another time. But at the moment, I'm sticking with Cambridge Favourite. It's a very well-known traditional strawberry. Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to be buying um, <clears throat> you know, any more strawberries for the time being, but if each one of them produces just at least, if I get at least one runner off of each one, um, you know, I should year on year just sort of compound the amount of strawberries I've got for that, uh, you know, <clears throat> initial purchase of six plants for five pounds. But for healthy plants, I don't think that's a bad price. Okay, so that's just what's going on here in the polytunnel. There's all sorts going on out there. But uh, that'll be a subject for another video because I haven't got much more memory on here. But uh, yeah, so I hope you're all happy. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Comments, questions, anything, post them down below. Take care and speak soon. Enjoy your Sunday.